What is going on? Welcome to QB Unplugged. I am Quincy Avery. This is... Defoe, Deshaun Watson. He almost forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by special guest, Rue Tomlinson Jr. He's a special quarterback out of Glenville. So it's not Cleveland though, right? Oh yeah, it's Cleveland. It's like kind of Cleveland, like barely. That's in the city of Cleveland, yeah, right? Is it, it's like the real Cleveland? Yeah. yeah. Okay, they said you was from yeah. the suburbs, so I was just trying no. to check. <laughs> make sure, you know what I'm saying, that the people, you know what I'm saying, wasn't messing up what we had going on. How you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Ready to learn a little bit. Show y'all what I got. Good. Uh, every week on QB Unplugged, we'll be either talking with Deshaun Watson or a top high school college quarterback uh, from either Cleveland or around the country. And we're really excited to have you on, talk about some of the things you're doing. What, what makes you a special quarterback? Uh, I feel like I can do it all. I can lead a team. I can run a little bit. I can pass. I, mean, I just feel like I can do it all. Hmm. That sounds like somebody I know. Um, that's a lot of the characteristics that I think Deshaun has. Uh, you kind of went through a little bit of adversity and ended up transferring. What what allowed you, you know what I'm saying, go through that as such a young player and be able to go to a team? When did you get to Glenville this year? I got there my junior year with like two months left. Right, so the season was already over. Mm -hmm. No one knew you. You going to this summer, your senior year. A lot of folks ain't willing to do this. They had a starting quarterback last year with a really good team. How'd you come in and cement yourself as a starting quarterback on a team that's already state title contender? They don't really need you, but you come in, take somebody's spot. Uh, just showing everybody that I'm capable of, capable of doing it, you know, just being a leader, building relationships with everybody. Uh, that's really it. Watch, well, you kind of did something similar yeah, to that. That back was my question. <laughs> I was about to ask him, what, what's been like the, the hardest thing for you in a new environment new team and like of course you know as a quarterback you want to come in you want to show everybody I'm the leader I'm, I'm this I can do this but it's not always that easy it's not always that smooth what's been one of the hardest things or the, one of the things that you had to learn through that whole process to take over that starting job uh it was definitely difficult because the kids that I'm playing with they all knew each other since they were five and six they learned how to play football together so it was different just coming in I'm the new kid had it so everybody just that I'm, I could play. I could be a leader. I could lead this team. And that's really it. Yeah, because I, I already see your personality hanging out with you, kicking it with you. You're real quiet. You're observant. You like mm -hmm. the, the feel the room, feel the environment. I'm the same way. And mm -hmm. I feel like with my situation coming in, people knew who I was. People at Glenville knew who, who you were. And being able to come in, I think the football, you know, of course, take care of itself. But I think the biggest thing for me was to kind of, like you said, get to know everybody. And I think that was a step of not just coming in, hey, I'm the guy, this is my team, this, that, the third, but no, I'm going to get to know my old lineman. I'm going to get to know my receivers, the defensive guys. And I know, you know, speaking with you and your mother, y'all had the whole offense over, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, had the whole offense over. Cause I, so it's like little stuff like that is going to mm -hmm. go a long way for y'all's season and not just for your season, but for you. You got you to gotta make sure you share with him how you get the whole offense over. Make sure you look out for your teammates because – uh, his his quarterback, his backup, done got a four thousand five hundred dollar fine. Man, you might have to step up and go ahead and pay that bill. But Doy Doy, I'm trying to look out for you. Got now for sure. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't know that. That's my first time hearing that. D DT DTR didn't tell me. So if he, he come away, you know, I, I might have to take care of it. Got to look out for your teammates, right? Always, always. So let's hop into your film a little bit. I know you did some some really good things. What's your record right now? Two and zero. Oh. 2-0, what you been doing? I've uh, been playing real good. Uh, throwing a lot, running a lot, a lot of RPOs, a lot of screens. Just trying to spread out the defense a little bit. These first two teams we played, they both run a cover three. Like, that's their base defense. That's all they, what they run the whole game. So we just went in both games with the same game plan. What was the game plan? You uh, can't tell you what <laughs> the same game plan. I tell you what so the game plan was. We know the was. corners were going to bail every time, so we just tried to take our short stuff. Yeah. And then with one uh, safety, we knew we attack had to the seams. Yeah, attack the seams. Yep. That's kind of different, though. In high school, that's how it is, right? In high school, when they play cover three, those safeties, just, the corners just uh, flying out. They're yeah, just flying. They're not middling anything. They not, just, yeah. yeah, you got third. The more and more football you play, the more those cornerbacks are going to be doing like. So, like, let's say you got number two and number one. They're running up the field together. Mm -hmm. They're going to try and apex it or play in between those guys 
So it makes it a little bit difficult. How am I going to throw the no, number one? How am I going to throw the number two? Mm -hmm. Someone as talented as you, you know what I'm saying, lucky lefty out here, mm -hmm. um, going to be able to make all those throws right now super easy. But as you keep progressing and progressing, it's going to be on you to take those little details, little nuggets. How am I seeing the game? What am I seeing on the field between these cornerbacks, these safeties that it's going to allow you to be um, super special? Mm -hmm. But let's, let's hop into this first play. Well, first off, who, who are we playing against? Uh, Owen Tangy Liberty, team out of Columbus. All right. So right here, just quick RPO. Got a tight end right here. Quick RPO looking at this guy right here. So if he drops down, then I'm just handing the ball off. But I was I was I held it a little bit. What so you I'm mean just, by if he drops down? What what does that mean? So he's a flats player, so I'm mm -hmm. looking at him. If he runs right out to the flats, mm -hmm. then I'm throwing it right behind his head right here. Uh huh. And then I'm he he saw me like right there. He could see him hop a little bit. He keeps looking at me right there. I just throw it right behind his head. Yeah. What could have been better about this, though? Do it a little quicker. Maybe a little quicker, a little bit better ball location. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, to me, this is the thing that takes you from where you're at high school now to being the guy in college. This ball right here that's high mm -hmm. and kind of gets you right here and slows him down, that's, that's okay, right? That's a completion. Mm -hmm. But now when you throw that ball and it puts him on his face mask or his chest right here, mm -hmm. now he's able to make a big play. Sure. We just saw that in one of the games – um, Deshaun had this preseason, yep. he played against the Kansas City Chiefs, literally the same concept. This is the high school version, he ran the NFL version. He took three steps right here for his slant, in the NFL he takes five, right? But the same exact play, you guys are doing the same thing versus the same coverage, right? He was in three, you're in three, right? So all these things are the same, high school and college, and now it's just a big difference between where you put that ball, and that's just the little things, right? That's how yep. you separate yourself from being a really good high schooler to being a really great college quarterback. It's a margin of error. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But no, you're not taking anything away from you. You still get 15 yards. Oh, yeah, big for play. sure. <laughs> it's positive yards. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? You got to continue to just grow from it. But we always, especially here, we want you to grow and never be satisfied. And mm -hmm. I know that's not your personality. That's not your, not your work ethic. But like I was telling Q, for me, even if, even if I might complete a ball, I, I'm never satisfied with that throw unless it's a catch and run and he's he's scoring. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Then it's like, all right, cool. What else I could have done better? All right, my fundamentals. Yeah, the ball was nice on that touchdown, but I'm hopping into my drop. We don't want to do that, mm -hmm. especially consistently. And that's the thing. Like sometimes we can get away with certain certain routes, certain drops, certain play actions, but can we get away with it consistently? Especially when it's two minutes, ten seconds on the clock, and we got to make this play. And my fundamentals are my details isn't as sharp as it need to be. That little small margin of error can cause us from being a superstar and winning a national championship or a state championship or a Super Bowl mm -hmm. or just being a runner-up and having to wait a whole another year for it, you know? That man that did both. He was a runner-up <laughs> once. He was a yeah, national so. champion once. So what we got so going on right here? We got uh, duplex and squeeze right here. What does uh, that mean? It's just the uh, dude, two, <laughs> two, two receivers on uh -huh. on two different sides, and then they're both squeezed right next to the tackle. Okay. So like a condensed formation. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. So mm -hmm. they they both like to run a vertical right here, but this guy he's gonna break off to a corner, and I don't know what this guy was doing. He's supposed to have flash, but that boy is fucked up. Yeah. That boy was in no man's fucking land <laughs> right there. Really. He, he, he just there. <laughs> yeah, he's out there. He's just he an innocent bystander. Right uh, spot at all. <laughs> but then he don't know what he's, he's doing. Right. Man, he's wide open right here. Uh huh. So give him the ball. It's a little late. Should have got it right off his break, but he got a chance to catch the ball, make a couple moves. I mean, you say it's a little late. I can't be mad at you. You threw it right off the hitch. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I was going to say the same thing. But that's, that's good. You, you want it fast. You want the ball to get to his hands a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Unless you fucked up the drop. Was this supposed to be a three-step or a five-step drop? Three-step, three-step. Oh, then you fucked up the drop. Then my whole opinion on this has changed. Mm -hmm. You know what, what, what I'm saying? What you take? Look, look uh, what he takes. He takes like a little baby five. He takes three. One, two, three. And then that uh, the extra, little extra bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we on the same page, right? Yeah. And I love that you hold yourself to that high of a standard. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, that, that that's actually good because depending on how – so I see right here, if you go back to the beginning, the one that's vertical, the guy kind of bumps him so it throws off the timing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can, I can see you want to make sure you see 
All right, cool. They level out, make sure that corner doesn't collapse because if that corner, you throw it on time in that corner, a good corner, see that, mm -hmm. and he's studying film, and he want to take that away, and you throw it out there, that can be a bad play happening. You know what I mean? Sure. So sometimes yeah. throwing outs, if you got time, those little quick hitches, mm -hmm. but as you get older and as you progress to the next level, that little hitch, those little things just got to happen a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And what I will say, like, I think you you have a good idea of what people are doing on defense, but you understand their rules, right? Once you understand their rules and you know he's in cover three, then you know that the, there's there's one guy to two guys, really one guy in, in high school who can take this play away. And that's his outside linebacker safety, whatever position he is. As soon as he does it, whatever that is that he calls himself doing, and forgive me to this young man if he's watching this, but if he does this, you know he's fucked. So you can take your time a little bit, mm -hmm. make sure you get a completion because the one thing that you want is when you have a big play and coach design something that's wide open, we can't miss those, yeah. right? Those sure. can't miss those. That's damn near worse interception. When you got somebody who's about to score a touchdown, you miss that. That's an interception, mm -hmm. basically, because you fucked like. We had points on the board, you took it away. You yeah, got to yeah. stay away from that. So that's why I said that was actually good. Mm -hmm. So don't fault yourself that you took a little extra. Timing was off, so you saw it. And like Q said, it was a great play call by the coach versus a, a, a coverage that it worked. So you had to see it, and you hit it. And then big play for you. Mm -hmm. See him up and throw him up. What play we got to get to for your next? Uh, I think it's – let's just keep scrolling and let's, go. Let's go nice. see a couple plays. It's you got a dog at running back too, don't you? Best running back in the state, D. Jones. Where's he going to college at? Uh, we don't know. He doesn't know yet, but it's going to be somewhere big. For it's sure. going to be somewhere yeah. big. Yeah. All right, here we go. Same exact plays, a different guy. <laughs> uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, on the bright side, the defender does something. Like he actually mm -hmm. does his job here, gets to his curl flat. We ran this out of trips though. Mm -hmm. So we got a five yard out right there yep. to hold the flat. Defender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a really good, good throw. Real good ball. I got a question though. Why are you moving like this in the pocket? Uh, I don't even know. That's on me. You don't know? Yeah, I don't know. A little paranoid a little bit. Yeah, this throw is so good. You're able to get it up and down over this linebacker. Right, you, you are getting, putting him in the torture rack. Mm -hmm. Up and down over him, right in his bread basket. This doesn't yeah. hurt you, but you want that level of consistency that you're talking about. You create that by not doing anything extra in the pocket when you don't need to. Mm -hmm. I have one question on this. On the back side, is, what is that receiver supposed to be doing? He should be running the corner to take him out the way. <laughs> but Gotcha. So, so I was going to say, uh, with this concept, you don't have anything coming, like a dig, anything coming back in your view. Because say, if you go back, Q, mm -hmm. say you have safety take, the vertical guy, mm -hmm. he peels off a little bit earlier, and he takes the flat. What 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 is the outlet? What is the check down? What is you know what are, what are you getting back to? Is it the running back? But he's sitting in protecting. Protecting, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I I'm just curious on this concept. If there's anything for you to get back, or is it more just like all right, well, we're playing one side and yeah, we're playing one side. But if it ever gets to that point where everybody's locked up, I can just take off and run. Yeah, because you got that. Yeah, always. <laughs> He's like that. that. Makes sense. But here, here's the challenge to you, and this is something I used to challenge him with a lot. When you're in a situation like this, you got you doing everything right. There's ten people who are doing their job to a T, right? Mm -hmm. You got your eleventh guy. What are you doing? Yeah. You're the you're the quarterback, but you're also the leader of the team. You're the leader of a man. Now, now it's on you to go challenge him, like, because this is his resume. We talk about football in a lot of different ways. This is this is who he is on film now, right? Everybody gets to see this. Mm -hmm. The whole world gets to watch him do this thing right here. And what is that? That's lazy. That's no attention to detail. That's that's not being a great teammate. Now it's on you to challenge him or at least pull him along like, hey, bro, you don't want to do that. Because there's going to be a college coach out there one day who's going to watch this and say, hey, we don't want a guy who's going to do this off the line of scrimmage. Just because the ball's not coming to you doesn't mean you're not a vital part of the play. And you got to make sure guys understand they have that responsibility. And you don't want when you run this play in the state championship this year, now you're playing against another great team that is just as good as y'all. Mm -hmm. And what I just talked about, the corner peels off, the safety takes the vertical, and the flat guy takes the flat. 
but they're spying you with one of their best defensive linebackers or, you know, defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Now I can't really run. What is something you can get back to to progress? All right, cool, I'm going to take this. You're going to watch this tape. You sit down with Coach. Coach, instead of running a corner, we need something coming back to my view because I can't throw a corner late backside when I'm looking front side. Mm-hmm. And like, he, uh, like Q said, that's, that's lazy. Hey, I, I might need you. You know, in, in a critical situation, we might be in a dog fight. If I turn back and I look to you and you're just kind of dancing around, that's not good for – not just for you – are for him, but for the team, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So the little things like that, you just take to him. It don't have to be aggressive. It don't have to be out of order. It don't have to be an embarrassment in front of people. One-on-one, hey, bro, let me send you this film. Let's talk about this. Now, I need you. I need your help on this. If you don't want to run the corner, run a dig for me or run <laughs> over the ball. Get that Something dig. Something coming full back to your speed face so you see So it. I can know if I turn my head, this is covered, and I turn my head backside progressing through my reads, I know where you're going to be. Mm-hmm. In this situation, you don't know where he's actually going to be. When you get conversations like that with the best people in the world, other NFL stars, how do, how do you bring that to them? Do you, I mean, I know it might not be that egregious, but there's right, right. times where you need something that might not be getting done. Or Nah, I mean, I think it's just a, it's a conversation that they, they need to hear. And I feel like sometimes they want to hear it. But you know how just humans, I mean, human beings are, and especially you get to this a certain level, I just kind of go with it and nobody's going to say anything and I forget about it ever happened. Mm-hmm. But you don't never, like we said, consistency. We don't never want that to happen. Everyone can get the ball any type of play. So you got to be able to just go to them and just communicate with them. Hey, look, let me show you something. Can't have this. We need this for you. Mm-hmm. I might just turn around and just throw you and not even read this side. You never know, you know what I'm saying, certain situations. For me, I like to be able to think ahead of the game. I like to think games ahead. Imagine, all right, if this happened, what can I get back to? Because I feel like as an offense, every play can work versus any coverage. Somebody can get the ball and we can have positivity. So. It's just that little leadership stuff. I think you you grow into that, and it's definitely difficult. Like you said, when you go to a new team, right? This is a team you haven't been there with these guys for four years. But remember what we talked about. It's good to be uncomfortable. Sometimes it's, it's being uncomfortable in a leadership position can take you to those new levels. And people see that, and they respect that at the end of the day. And if they don't respect it, then, hey, that's, that's on them. They don't want to be great. You know what I'm saying? Sure. What, what are we going to do the rest of the season to kind of take your team from being one of the best in your class, one of the best in the state, to the best in the state, one of the best in the country? Uh-huh. Uh, just being a leader, being together for real. We got a motto: is better together. We're all the, we're all better as one. Mm-hmm. So, one guy messes up, don't get on him. Just love him up and just teach him what he did wrong. I'll tell you something too, though. Before you get to that cue, and just a little advice going to the next level for the rest of the year. And just I know we talked about it a little bit off camera. It's like three things that the next level and especially. Because I'm already going to speak it to existence. In three years, I want you to be at the level I'm at in the NFL, start for an NFL team your rookie year. And I'm, you know, got two years in college or two and a half years in college. Got the rest of this year, two more years, another third year. Everything goes smooth, God willing. But the three things is really continue to grow with progressions and fundamentals, always working on that. Third down, red zone, and two minute end of game and in a half situations. Those three to four things, if you can continue to master those, that's gonna really take your, not just your team, but yourself to better, bigger and better heights, you know, because those are the key moments of the game that's gonna really gonna define if you guys win or not. Sure. You got any questions? Uh, yeah, I got a couple questions. My first one is, what's your favorite route to throw? My favorite route to throw? Q, you probably know. I think anything vertical. Mm-hmm. So vertical route, we call it pistol route or any go routes. Um, it's a pistol route where we're aiming at the safety, the nearest safety, and he has a three-way option. He can take it pylon, he can take it across the field like a beeline, or he can take it vertical. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably my favorite route to throw, just letting it fly. Sure. What was your biggest, the hardest transition from, from high school to college and then from college to the NFL? Uh, starting with high school to college, I think it really just comes down to the knowledge of the game and then 
the biggest thing is really just taking, you know, the time. Because once you get, you know, high school is very set, you know, it's very kind of, this is what I'm doing for class. Mm -hmm. And then a responsibility for high school, I mean, once you get to college, it, it grows. All right, I'm not in class all the time. I got a lot more free time. All right, cool. I could be at the stadium and I could be working out or I could be watching tape or I could be downtown hanging out with some college students. You know what I'm saying? And then once you get to the professional level, <laughs> it's even worse. Because now I got a little bread. I mean, you got college. college a lot now. of bread. You got a lot of bread. It's no little, little buddy. Buddy. In college now, that's even worse than what I had. Yeah, because these boys Cause got, now can you really got get a, million, a million dollars in your pocket. Yeah, you got millions of dollars in your pocket at the collegiate level. And you got class and all this free time. And then when you get to the pros, it's even more. I think that's for me. Football is going to always be football. You're going to grow. The game, is, of course, is going to change over time. But as you learn and you experience, you're gonna, football is football. It is what it is. 100 yards, it's points are still the same. Nothing changed about that. It's the stuff around you that is going to – are you going to continue to put in that work? You're going to continue to have the mindset you had to get to – the professional level and once you get there and you have some success are you going to continue to grow and build on that and not get comfortable oh i made it i got this i got that or well, we having a little bit of success because in the pros everybody's good you can't get caught up in the records you can't be caught up in i was drafted this nah that un undrafted free agent he gonna come in and he coming to take somebody's job who had the job for 10 years you know what i'm saying so yeah. everybody's trying to fight and eat for that job and you just got to continue to work Sure. I'll tell you this, on the field, you know, high school now, you make a mistake, you miss a throw. Uh, if we get back to it, we caught it again, it's probably going to be open. You're going to hit that big play next time. Mm -hmm. Every level you go up, uh, every level you add, smart, you, you, <laughs> that guy right now, you might have beat him once. You're not going to beat him again like you just beat. Yeah. Like, they just get more and more advanced. They understand, too. You got more higher-level guys you're playing against, and things just get a little bit, little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to make mistakes becomes less and less. I mean, and I think that's what continues to change is the higher level you get up to. Yeah, the margin of error just continues to shrink and shrink and shrink. As you, and I challenge you this, every Sunday, watch the games. In college, it's hard because, you know, it's very different. Professional, next time we speak, I'm going to ask you how many blowouts it was on that day. Watch every single game, no matter who's playing. Watch, it's going to be Kansas City and Detroit play the first Thursday night game. It might be 33 to 34. And no matter what it is, oh, Detroit got this, oh, Kansas City Super Bowl champs, that game's going to come down to a two-minute drive every single time. How you handle the end of first half and how you handle it is it's a one-possession game. Time. It's just like the, the, when you get really good, it's just how do you handle those critical situations, and that's what separates you from. You would agree. Yeah. Because everybody's good. Everybody's good. And that little piece is going to separate you from good to great. We appreciate y'all joining us. Another episode of QB Unplugged. Yes, sir. Uh, we had Rule Tomlinson Jr., Glenville. Yep, yep. DY. Uh, make sure you tap in the Lockerverse. Look forward to seeing you guys. Make sure you guys join the Dog Pound community. Can't wait to see you there. Oh, wow. Last thing is a lefty shoot. We can move.